welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I got into medicine in South Africa. I know that I personally had a lot of questions when I was applying to universities and hoping that I would be able to get in to follow my dream of becoming a doctor and so I'm hoping that if any of you have similar questions I'll be able to answer them for you now that I know more. So specifically in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the subjects that I took at school, how the national benchmarking tests work, the universities that I applied to, the marks that I received at the end of my trick, so that you have some idea of kind of the range, the acceptances that I received, and the advice that I would give to any of you who are possibly hoping to become a medical student one day. So I hope that you enjoy this video and find it useful. Okay, so to start off with the subjects that I chose at the end of grade nine. Firstly, the two subjects that are compulsory for medicine and many health science courses are maths and physics. So you kind of have to be good at those or at least be getting good enough marks at the end of grade nine in order for your teachers to encourage you to take them from grade 10 to matric, or at least that was the case for us. And working hard on those two subjects is very important because they are the most challenging academically, I would say. And then taking life sciences or biology, again, is a pretty standard subject you should take if you're wanting to get into medicine because you're going to have to be well versed in at least some of the basics because otherwise when you start you're going to have a much like steeper learning curve because especially the first year is mostly revision of things covered in school with a bit more added on and if you don't know those things that were covered in school it's going to make your life a lot more difficult so there's the first three then I took geography as my optional subject because it was just kind of one of those a lot of people will take accounting or like a more fun artsy degree, artsy degree, artsy subject. And then I took Afrikaans, English, LO. And then in terms of additional subjects, they used to be called AP subjects, but now I believe they're called further study subjects. So I took further studies mathematics from grade 10 to matric and I took further studies physics in grade 11 and 12 and I would actually say that further studies physics has been more useful in studying medicine because first year we had a physics course which was kind of strange it was sort of like an extension of matric work but a lot of the things that were new for people who just took physics I'd already done before in further studies physics so I found that very beneficial yes I believe those are my nine subjects I don't think I've forgotten any of them so yes that's what I chose I would say double science is your main priority this is obviously only relevant if you're in grade nine going into grade ten and wondering what subjects to choose but I'm assuming that most people watching this video are probably a little bit older than that because you're wondering more about the university side of things so I will get into that now okay so now we're going to talk about NBTs or National Benchmarking Tests. So these are tests kind of used to assess everyone on a general level because some people do the IB system and some do the government system which is slightly different in the way they test. So this is to kind of equalize everything. So I know for VIT specifically, NBTs and matric results are weighted basically equally in how they let you in. And so it's very important to make sure that you do work for your NBTs. Because a lot of people will tell you that, no, it's fine. Like, they're really chill. They're just to test where you are. But you need to get high marks for your NBTs if you're trying to get into medicine. Because those marks will have a big impact. Because I know there's quite a few people who had high matric marks. But maybe their NBT marks weren't as high or vice versa. Where they have really good NBT marks and that almost compensated for their matric marks. So there's three different tests. There's I think English literacy, mathematical literacy and mathematics and you write them all in one day. Your school will hopefully tell you more about them or otherwise you just go onto the internet and find out about them. But make sure that you prepare 
I know that Advantage Learn is a website that offers a course that helps to kind of guide you. But yes, these are very important. So don't neglect the NBTs because that can make a big difference and I feel like it's not really talked about enough. So personally, I applied to four different universities the thing with trying to get into one of the very hard degrees is you kind of need to give yourself as many options as possible. So I would say even four different universities probably wasn't as many as I should have applied to. But luckily I actually got in, otherwise that would have been a problem. So I applied to the University of Pretoria, the University of Cape Town, the University of Advertisement and the University of Stellenbosch. Other universities that I could have or would have applied to would have mainly have been the University of the Free State I think because they do have a very good medical program as far as I know and I believe you can do your medical degree in five years instead of six. I don't know what they cut out but apparently it's a good program but to be honest the application process involved getting like letters of recommendation and stuff which wasn't needed for the other universities and I was just a bit too lazy. But don't be lazy like me if you actually want to get in because the more options you have, the better. Okay, so now we just have a little disclaimer. I'm going to tell you guys what I'm pretty sure my average was. I can't really remember to be honest and I can't be bothered to go check. But this is not me trying to brag or anything. It's just to give you kind of an idea of the range my marks were so that you can see whereabouts you lie. So... Basically, I'm also packing to go to class, but I got for the end of my check, I believe my aggregate was between 93 and 94 percent. Now, I know that's pretty high, and going my check, Jasmine, she was grounding. But to be honest, if you're really wanting to kind of at least get into the first round, I would say aiming for at least a 90 percent aggregate probably should be your goal which I know it's hot and that's not to say if you get under 90% you're not going to get in but it's more that was my benchmark goal for grade 11 on my trick to make sure that I had a good shot and then as far as getting in there are many different rounds because obviously some there's only so many people they're going to accept straight away and medical acceptances come out a lot later than most other degrees so I'm pretty sure I only started getting acceptances in October, even though you apply much earlier. And a lot of people only get last minute acceptances. So, for example, I got my first acceptance into VITS two weeks before my boyfriend did. And then other people would have gotten a few weeks later. And also when matric results come out in January, not everyone gets accepted straight away because people first have to accept it, reject it, so that there's space for more people. So if you don't get in straight away, it's okay. You just have to keep praying and hoping that all your hard work's paid off. Like some people, my one friend, for example, had gone to another university and was enrolled in another course before finding out, like midway into starting university, that actually there was a place available for him. So don't accept instant applications, but also, before I go, I'm also going to quickly mention where I got accepted to. So, personally, I was instantly rejected from Stellenbosch. I don't know why, they just didn't like me. But I did receive acceptances to first vits, and then I also got to UCT on my grade 11 marks only. And then once my matric marks had come out, I also received an acceptance from the University of Pretoria. So, I had three acceptances in total. If anyone is curious as to why I chose but I will talk about that in a later video. But yes, getting acceptance into more than one place. I mean, getting acceptance one, getting acceptance into one place is difficult enough, and multiple places is not very common. And so, just keep in mind that you may not have your choice, and you kind of need to be pretty sure that medicine is something that you want to do, and be willing to go somewhere that you might not have beforehand you were going to so yes I hope that wasn't too confusing and informative 
but I'll get back to you later because I have a bus to catch. So I'm just going to finish off this video by giving you guys some advice for applying. So firstly, medicine isn't a degree you should go into if your sole motivation is money. Obviously, everyone needs to earn money in order to live life in the society. But medicine and the work you do is so much more than just making money. You have to care about people and want to help people. And it is quite a selfless career. You're going to spend many hours, you have to put in so much time and it takes a lot out of you as a person. Okay, I'm speaking generally, seeing as I haven't actually started doing any clinical practice, but my understanding anyways, is that you just have to know that you want a career that involves helping people. So I would very much recommend that you do some community service. I personally did all three levels of the President's Award, or the Duke of Edinburgh Award, which has bronze, silver and gold levels. And I learned so much through all of those experiences. And just having to take the time out of my busy schedule and just give to others was an experience that taught me a lot. And so I would recommend becoming involved in a similar program and just investing your time in your community so that you can learn whether this is something that you really want to do. And then in general, I just wish you the best of luck with your academic studies, with your goals. Keep in mind that if you don't get into medicine, your life really isn't over. I do believe that everything happens for a reason, generally speaking. And your path might not look exactly how you envision it, but hopefully a life works out for you the way that it's meant to. So yes, I know FITS is the GIMP program where from any of the universities, if you've completed the undergraduate program, that somehow relates to life sciences or well, human life sciences or biological sciences, it is possible to apply to that. That is also very competitive but there are options for you. But I wish you all the best, and if you get into medical school, good luck. Your work is only just beginning. But yes, that's everything that I think I would have liked to have known as a early matric end of grade 11 student looking to apply to universities. If you have any other questions, you're welcome to leave them in the comments. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.